So let's have a bit of a discussion on compression top caps. So, you know, there's so many different types, like the, as you can see, there's a whole range there, um, different styles. Um, you know, people try and save weight, they try and personalize the bike, and all that sort of stuff's fine, uh, up to a point. But the first thing you need to understand is what is the purpose of that top cap? Um, you know, pe people would say it's there um, to preload the bearings, and that's that, that's true. Other people would say it's there to stop your stem flying off if your bolts come loose. Well, yeah, your bolts, your stem bolts shouldn't really be coming loose. Um, you shouldn't be relying on that to hold your stem on. Um, and another sort of really often overlooked factor is that that cap keeps all the gunk and stuff like from coming uh, and going down into your um, compression plug and into your into your fork so um, so let's have a look at some different ones so here's um, just a generic uh, this one's a specialized just an aluminium uh just yeah looks the, the you know the standard ones which are really common you know you often see these engraved with different logos and um or laser etched or whatever different anodized different colors but they're they're quite generic as you can see by the weight eight uh eight and a half grams here's a different version um this one's um a richy carbon one so it's actually the same sort of shape and stuff but it's just made out of carbon so it's a little bit lighter it's 7.110 grams um, and then Cervelo have got their sort of take on it which has got a bigger hole in the middle for a different style bolt which I'll go into a bit it's an aluminium bolt um, again that's uh, that's 5.778 grams for the weight weenies out there then um, a different sort of style but similar sort of thing it's a, this one's a Merida carbon um, and it's basically flat instead of having that dome sort of shape it's basically flat um, it runs a, um, a countersunk screw instead of just a normal socket head cap screw like the others 5.170 grams and then there's this one now <laughs> This one I've seen uh, there's a couple of vari variants of it, um, and it's all sort of hollowed out to make weight to save weight, and it is quite light. It is 4.421 grams. However, whoever designed this, thinking it's a good idea, obviously has never ridden a bike um, either in the rain or on a wind trainer or anywhere where it's actually going to get used um, because as you can see with all those cutouts in it if you ride your bike in the rain the water just goes straight down into your compression plug and fork interface and um, your, your fork being typically carbon your compression plug typically being aluminium then you get the galvanic corrosion set up and all that sort of stuff so and it's even worse if you use your bike on a trainer and you're sweating onto it so this is the most ridiculous uh, design for a top cap uh, that, you, that you can get um, yeah less than ideal is what we say less than ideal um, then Pinarello have got one. This one's actually a piece of pressed aluminium, and it's actually lighter than the one, the stupid one, you know, with all the cutouts in it, which lets all the moisture and water and rubbish and stuff into your interface. Um, so this one's actually lighter, and it's, it runs a countersink, a countersink bolt. Um, the last one is this is my own um, one which is basically a piece of 
of uh, thermoplastic carbon plate and it runs a countersunk bolt in it and that's about as light as you can go um, and still be practical. Um, not, not that I'm a weight weenie but I do things because I can. Okay, total weights. So a stainless steel cap screw and the generic aluminium, 16.159 grams. The light, lighter Pinarello cap with a stainless steel countersunk screw, socket head screw, 10.67. So fair saving in weight there if you're into that sort of thing. Now we go a little bit lighter again. So we're using this aluminium uh, bolt with the Cervelo uh, in that system. The problem is that you you get a lot of galvanic corrosion in, um, I'll just draw, in this region here of the bolt because it's in direct contact with the carbon here and you're sweating on it and you're riding in the rain and all that sort of stuff and so it gets, um, you get galvanic corrosion and then it seizes to the thing and yeah. Um, and then you have the, uh, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the one, yeah, it's got, look, it is, you know, it's, 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 it's quite light. Yeah, it's like three grams lighter than something that actually is practical and functional. Three grams. And it does that by having an aluminium bolt instead of a stainless steel bolt. So, you know, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. It's, um, as I said, less than ideal. So, you know, to, to save three grams. Yeah, anyway. Um, so corrosion uh, in this area is real. Uh, as you can see in this example, you've got significant uh, galvanic corrosion between the stem and the carbon all the way around that contact area. Let's see if I can draw it all the way around. Um, yeah, so you've got significant galvanic corrosion. You can see that the um, the, the paint is all bubbled off uh, there. You've also got quite a lot of resin degradation on this edge. Now you can see chunks missing between the toes. You can see um, exposed fibers sort of, you know, along the toes here and here, etc. Um, yeah, inter inter interface along the uh, the bolt. And this is a stainless steel bolt, and it's still got some rust in it. So, um, I mean, this is you can say this is an extreme example. Um, obviously, it hasn't been uh, cared for much. Um, you know, it's been out exposed in the weather. So, I mean, the thing is, the th with the carbon plates, the UV. UV light can uh, degrade the resin significantly and um, you know you got that ex exposure to moisture all that sort of stuff is uh, you know the, the thing is the top cap particularly on the trainer when, you, when if you're riding on the trainer which a lot of people are you know in this COVID lockdown sort of situation been you know been spending time on the trainer your sweat just drops from your head basically straight down onto that interface, um, straight onto the top cap. Um, when you're riding a bike along down the road, it's, it, it's not as bad because when you're, at, when you're riding at speed, the, the wind evaporates the sweat off your face and so it doesn't just drip down onto the bike. So that's why riding the bike on the trainer is a much more aggressive environment for, you know, for this this sort of thing and you get a lot more corrosion problems on bikes when you use them on the trainer uh, and let, let's face it if you're using your bike on the trainer you don't need to be a weight weenie, weight weenie with it you know it's like you're not actually going anywhere you, the bike could weigh 100 kilos and it would not matter to the training that you're doing so um, just just be sensible be practical make things last um, and
and don't don't cause problems because if you if you do this sort of thing if you ride your bike on the trainer and get in this situation um it, yeah less than ideal okay on that note we'll uh we'll wrap it up and uh hope you learned something and um we'll do compression plugs on uh, as the next uh, the next video in this series okay see ya